I'm going to introduce our next speaker. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, it's a little bit awkward because I think he's the only person here with nicer hair than I have. Um, he's been at every single CMX Summit. He's been a part of this community since day one. He's been one of the leaders of this space. Uh, like he, he worked for uh, SendGrid, he worked with Techstars, and now he's at Keen.io. He's somebody that I turn to all the time whenever I need advice, whenever I need to figure out how to do things. He's one of the most authentic community builders I know, but also has a deep, deep understanding of how to build community and build community strategy into the business and how to be that change agent that we just talked about, how to help your company understand how to become a community-driven business. So. I'm very, very excited to introduce the VP of Community at Keen.io, Mr. Tim Falls! Ready? Thank you. That was awesome. Woo! Thanks. And thank you, David, for such a wonderful setting of the stage for today and such a wonderful intro to me. Um, that, was, that was really awesome. I've been on, as he mentioned, four times I've been on the giving end of that standing ovation to be on the receiving end. It's pretty awesome. Um, really humbled. I've been following David and CMX and being as much a part of this community as I can over the last, since it existed. And I've really, really respected everybody who's taken the stage before me, so to be up here and have your ears today is, is a humbling experience for me. So thank you very much for that. Um, so today is October 15th. It's my father's birthday. So happy birthday, Dad. If mom helps you use the internet, maybe you'll see this recording and know that I was thinking of you this morning. Another thing about 15th, and humor me for a second because I'm going to go on a tangent. Um, you ever have that experience where you hear a word or you see a word or you, or you read it or write it? And it just seems weird, even though you've seen it or read it or wrote, written it a uh, hundred other times. Well, that happened when I typed 15th on this. So as any good procrastinator, procrastinator would do, I left the keynote and I Googled 15th. And it turns out 15th is a musical term and has a big, huge definition in Wikipedia. But it, the gist of it is that two octaves do not make a 16th. And we all know octave means eight, but it makes a 15th. So in music, 8 plus 8 equals 15, which really confuses me. So I'm going to start talking about community again and leave the music to someone else. Anywho, back to that title. So I chose this title really deliberately, and David helped me with it. And I think it has a lot to do with what you can get out of this talk and what I hope that is helpful about this talk. So I want to dive into some definitions so we set the stage for what this talk is all about and what you can get out of it. So cultivate is a verb, and it has lots and lots of words that use to describe it and define it. But in the end, it's things like prepare, preparation and work, development through education and training, and devotion of oneself. So I want you to remember that throughout the rest of this talk. And oriented, also a verb, also lots and lots of words that are used to define it. But if you distill it down, you have a few th key things relating to your surroundings, positioning toward an object, and getting your bearings. So once again, keep this, these definitions in mind. And I know this is kind of a packed title, cultivating a community-oriented conversation. So we want to unpack that for everybody. So that's the end of the vocab lesson for today. But what is this all about? David mentioned starting within and building a core. And that's what I want to start with today, to get you guys off on the right foot. Because it's not just about building a community team within, but it's about making sure everybody within your organization is on board with what that community team is all about, and the mission. And not only being on board of it and understanding it, but being a part of it, participating in it. Cultivation of a community-oriented company. So you're working internally to cultivate that. And you're using community to orient your company in the direction it needs to go to survive in the business world that David described to us. So the next 22-ish minutes of our lives together, we're going to say hi. We're going to tell a story. We're going to make some assumptions so that story does make some, enough sense to us so we can really apply what we learn in it. And we're going to make shit happen. 
So, I mentioned we'll say hello. This is my dog, Khan. He says hello, too. I just walked him a little bit ago. He just turned 12. And this is my about me slide. So when I was making this slide, I thought, you know, why do I always feel uneasy when I'm preparing, preparing a talk and I have to make this slide that's about me? And I thought about that. Why does that make me feel weird? Well, it's because it's all about me, and I like to be a humble person, and this seems self-promotional, but there must be some kind of value in this, right? Every other speaker is going to probably have a similar slide, so there must be value for me and you. So what's the value for you? What makes this less about me? The point of this slide is to establish two things in my mind. One is intimacy, familiarity with me as a person and a human, and one is credibility so that you know that I actually have something up here to say besides what all the nice things that David said to me. So I'm gonna dive into some personal details, professional history that'll help you build credibility or establish credibility with you and a little bit more intimacy and be more familiar with who I am as a person. So you already met Khan. Now you have all my contact information. Um, as David mentioned, I've, I've done professional things at places like Techstars as an early employee and SendGrid as an early employee where I built an evangelist team there and a community-oriented team of about 15 people. But way before that, I grew up on a farm in Indiana. I moved to the mountains of Colorado for six years. And then I found myself out here in San Francisco discovering awesome things like CMX Summit. So that's a little bit about me. Now, a little bit more about you. I want everyone to raise their hands to answer the following questions, and if you raise your hand, that means you're saying yes to the question. Who loves their jobs? Who loves what they do every day as a community professional? Who loves the things that they spend, the time they spend doing what they do? That was a lot of hands. That's awesome. Okay, you got it. Awesome. Now I know something about you. You know something about me, and we'll move on to story time. So this story that I'm going to tell, we'll take up most of the rest of our time together, starts with an email. And that email came from an engineer and one of my coworkers. So I woke up on a Monday morning after several days of doing the community thing. I was at a hotel, I was on the road, my team members were with me, people who were on the community team, and other coworkers who were outside of the community team, but doing the community thing with us. And we were having a great time. We were out on the road, we were going to conferences, meetups, meeting people, creating good vibes, doing all the things that we thought we were supposed to be doing. And, and we were right about that. But on, in the mothership, back home, things weren't so great. Technology wasn't working and customers weren't so happy. So the engineer who wrote this email also wasn't so happy. He was staying up and getting woken up at 3 a.m. to put out fires. So while we were blogging about all the fun we were having, he was posting on our status page, sorry everybody, we're, trying, we're working on it. So we were having fun, he was not having fun, and that, that represents a conflict. And that conflict can result in a lot of different ways. And if you have the groundwork laid internally, if you've cultivated community, and you've oriented your company in the right way, the rest of this email thread can turn out really well. So we're gonna talk about that groundwork and that foundation for the, in, the, in the next couple minutes. So, I talked about, I mentioned some assumptions. Assumption A, a partially integrated, poorly oriented community program does not deliver ideal results, typically performing suboptimally and ultimately becoming unsustainable in the absence of progress. I promise I won't read from my slides after this one. Assumption number two, a well-oriented, a fully integrated community program will make you say yay. And assumption Roman numeral three, there are many steps along the way to yay. We're gonna explore three of those steps today and I'm sure you're gonna discover your own along the way. So this gets to the heart of the talk. This is what I think will provide you with some, some meat to take away and some, some tactics to impl implement at your own companies and your own teams. And there's gonna be, we're gonna start with three steps towards community, well, that was a lot easier to type than it was to say, so. Um, the three steps are find yourselves. Number two is set your course. And number three is move forward. So we're gonna dive into each one of those real quickly. When it comes to finding yourselves, 
This is about reflecting on where you are today. A theme that emerged from the last CMX Summit was that some companies don't get community, and that as a community professional in that company, you don't know where to start. There are other companies that really, really get it, and it's well ingrained in that company. So they lie on this spectrum of get it or don't get it. Some are at the good end, some are at the not so good end, some are somewhere in between. And all of us lie on this spectrum, and before we set off on this journey, we need to find where we are. How do you find that place, where you are today? Here's a few ways. What do your founders think about community? How did they start this company? Was it with community in mind? How does community fall within the overall strategy of your company? Where does it exist? Not, not in, the, in the hierarchy or in the org chart, but how, does, how much representation does it have? How much impact does it have on the overall strategy? And what does the board think about it? If you have investors and advisors, do they know community exists at your company? And then numbers. What percentage of your company is dedicated to community? Dedicated. Again, we want everyone to be a part of it and participate, but what part is dedicated to it? And how much budget do you have? And then the big question, have you ever questioned your existence tomorrow? Have you ever thought, I don't know if this team's going to be around, because I don't know if we have a bit enough support? If you ask yourself all these questions, you reflect on them, you're probably going to be able to find about where you fall on that spectrum. So once you find your place, step two is to set your course forward. And in doing so, you reach a fork in the road and a knife, because emoji. <laughs> Conveniently, the fork has three prongs. And the first prong is to abort mission. This is one of your options. Maybe you're way down that end of the spectrum that you don't want to be on, and maybe you're just not passionate about what you're doing. Maybe this company doesn't drive you to make it better. And that's OK. That's an option. A second option is to deal with it, status quo. Maybe, you know, this is good enough. I'm going to do this. I don't know why. You Take that option, but there are circumstances where it might be okay. And the third is to make it better. And that's what I believe everybody in this room is going to do. They're going to choose to make it better. So that's where we're going to go with for the rest of the talk. And we're going to move forward from there. And this is where you plan and implement that plan. But as a speaker up on a stage, I can't give you a plan. And I can't help you implement it right now. I'll help later if you need. But what I can do is give you a few tips and tricks, what I like to call power-ups. And amongst those power-ups, there's some tools that you can make sure to take advantage of those in the best way. So let's explore those. There's three power-ups I'd like to share with you. One is inclusion. One is communication. And one is trust. So the first of those is inclusion. And I like to think of inclusion in the context of shared experiences. Some things in life are just really hard to grok without experiencing it firsthand. Community is one of those things. And a way to get someone to, ex to, to really understand who's have never done community, who's in your company, to get it is to share an experience with them. And the big secret is that they're already included. They just might not know it. We all are. It's not about pulling people into something that they've never been a part of or that they're totally uh, alien to. It's about empowering them to be a part of what they would be a part of anyway. It's about giving them permission to do the things that they would be doing if they knew such permission was granted. There's a lot of ways to do this. This is an example of how Betabrand does this, or has done this, or the fact that they've had the cultivation throughout, the, that, throughout their organization that this stuff happens. This is the CFO of Betabrand. If you know Betabrand, it's a community-driven platform where anybody can submit an idea to get clothes made. The CFO wanted the best travel pants made. So even though he gets paid to crunch numbers, he spent some time submitting a project to their platform, to their community, as a participant to get the best travel pants made. This is a screenshot that you surely can't see, but the orange thing at the top says Hacker News, and it might be familiar to some of you. It's a developer forum. And some more things that you can't see up there are, is, are some words that were typed by an engineer at Stripe. And that engineer at Stripe surely gets paid to write code on a daily basis, but she also feels empowered 
to spend her time doing community stuff, being a participant, answering questions that are really indirectly related to their platform, but it's helpful for their community members. And another example is one that we've done at Keen. This is an open source repo on GitHub. It's a playbook to throw a happy data hour. It's a pretty simple thing. Go to a bar, put a credit card down, invite a bunch of people, drink, talk about data maybe. We've done them all over the world, and any employee can see this playbook and go do it themselves, and the community team will support them in that. But having this open source repo also allows community members to see it. And this is a tweet from the first Happy Data Hour that was run by our community members in, in Hawaii. None of us got to go, unfortunately. Um, but the great thing about this was this was facilitated to the community member by someone outside of the community team. Her job wasn't specifically community, but she took it upon herself to help this community member make a happy data hour happen. So if none of these examples resonate with you, they don't make sense, or maybe you've tried them before and they've failed, you're still searching for what do you do. And I challenge you to think about the thing that sparked the passion in you. What experience have you had as a community manager, as a community person within your company, that really, really ignited the flame. And share that experience. Much like someone who discovers a bug in, in software, goes to the product team and recreates that bug so the product team can be compelled to take it to the engineering team and recreate it there so that they can be compelled to write the code to fix it, you recreate the experience for your coworkers who don't yet know what community is all about so that they can understand it and grasp it and be a part of it. The second power up is communication, and this seems pretty obvious. It's not about talking more, or slacking more, or emailing more, though. It's about leveling up and preparing yourself to be a leader within this new business model, and this new economy, and this new society that David mentioned. There are things that you can do to really improve the way you communicate with your coworkers internally. Nonviolent communication, there's a whole book on it. It's amazing. These aren't things that we do naturally as humans, unfortunately. Emotional intelligence and self-awareness, these are skills that you can cultivate at the individual team and organizational level that will help you relate to each other better. Tools like StrengthsFinder and Myers-Briggs, they allow you to understand the people as people and their tendencies. At Keen, everyone takes StrengthsFinder. We all post our top five strengths on the team page and also internally, so people have a common vocabulary, they understand What's motivating these people? Why are they behaving the way they're behaving? And these are, these are tools that help you lay that groundwork. You as community professionals and people within your company can be the change agents that drive these initiatives forward in your company. And in so doing, cultivating those relationships and a sense of community and what it's all about. A third is trust. Again, really obvious, right? But it's not just about knowing that trust is important, it's about breaking it down and knowing where you fall in terms of building trust and how do you build it better. A trust, is equa a trust equation is a really awesome tool that I've been using in this sense. It says that credibility, reliability, and intimacy added together as a sum and divided by self-orientation equals trustworthiness. So at the beginning of this talk, when I establish intimacy with you, telling you, telling you about stuff about me as a person, and I establish credibility with you, telling you about what I've done as a professional, and now when I hearken back to that, I start to grow a little bit more reliable in your minds. And hopefully, if this is helpful to you, I'm lowering my self-orientation. So I'm maximizing the top and minimizing the bottom, and therefore optimizing for, tr for trustworthiness. So you break down into these variables and look at the different audiences within your company and how you can build these things on the top and minimize these things on the bottom. You'll become more trustworthy. Another tool is RACI. This stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and Informed. And this is an example of the RACI at Keen in the community team. You probably can't read that either, but it's a spreadsheet and it says all the things we do, our activities, and all the people on our team. And then it says who's responsible for those things. Who's held accountable? Who should be consulted if someone wants to know about those? Who should be informed? And anyone in our company can see this and come to us and say, hey, I need help with this, or I want to get involved with that. 
And the whole organization does this, so we can flip it on them and say, hey, you're doing that, we can contribute there, we can get involved. So, back to that, back to that email. That's a confused emoji. What happens next? If we have this groundwork laid, if we've cultivated the skills, the personal relationships, and all these things that we just talked about, if we've taken the power-ups and we've implemented these tools and used them, then this confused face can be happy. And the end of this email can end in hugs all around, homie. And I had a really bad feeling in my gut when I first read that email, but when I got to the end of that thread just an hour later, after seeing the replies, I was energized and enthusiastic. And I told the engineer at that time, I'm going to tell this story because I think it's meaningful, because it's, a, it's not what I've seen in the past. Usually that engineer holds up and, and doesn't say anything and, and holds back. But he trusted us. He had self-awareness. He had emotional intelligence and communication skills, and he shared it, and it turned into a really positive thing. So, to bring this full circle, change is happening, as David mentioned. And that change catalyzes a need to adapt, to survive as companies, as teams, as professionals. And a company that's oriented and guided by community is going to be the successful company, and the team is going to be the successful team. And you, we, are the cultivators, internally, to make this work for our companies and for ourselves. So go out, establish a baseline, make a plan, and execute on it. And in so doing, you're going to lay a foundation and a healthy environment that's characterized by inclusion, communication, and trust. And your company's going to get it. It's not just going to be the community team that gets it, or you. The whole company is going to get it, and they're all going to participate. And you're going to be more successful. So with that, I ask you to go forth and be happy and make shit happen. <laughs> happy shit. <laughs>